Welcome back to our steps of discussing uh, fitting models, or particularly fitting linear models. And in this lecture video, I want to kind of dive into uh, some of the exploratory data analysis you might want to do uh, before fitting a linear model. And this actually builds uh, directly on all of our lectures on data visualization um, because it basically relies a lot on um, making plots and um, doing some simple uh, statistic, summary statistical calculations. So in the previous video, I, I hypothesized, we were thinking about the relationship between uh, soil temperature and, and its potential predictors. And here I've, I've made some just simple scatter plots of uh, the, the soil temperature on the y-axis uh, versus different predictors on the x-axis. So in uh, this SWC is the soil water content, uh, WS is wind speed, TA is air temperature, VPD is VPD, uh, RGL uh, is the long wave radiation, and RG is the short wave or solar radiation. And the long wave is the thermal. And some, so if we look at these, we can see that in some of them, uh, the relationships uh, do seem to be strong, such as TA in RGL, uh, and some of them they appear to, to be weaker, VPD, wind speed, and uh, uh, solar shortwave radiation. Uh, and some of them appear to have a relationship, but it appears kind of complex, such as the soil water content, uh, which kind of uh, has you know, a strong relationship uh, going for a kind of a negative relationship, but then it has kind of this other kind of wing over here uh, that's doing something a little bit different. <clears throat> So one of the reasons that we do visualizations is to kind of start to think about uh, the patterns in our data and uh, the fact that um, just simple summary statistics alone uh, do not tell us about uh, critical aspects of our data and how it's distributed and how it's organized. And a great example of this comes from a, a classic uh, set of simulated data called uh, Ascom's Quartet. And, and Ascom created this uh, set of data visualizations uh, to represent some relationship between some X and some Y data, uh, where the summary statistics are identical. A lot of key important summary statistics are identical between these figures. So in all these figures, uh, the mean of the X data is the same, the mean of the Y data is the same, uh, the variance in the Y is the same, uh, the correlation between the x and the y is the same. Uh, the regression slope would be the same. Regression intercept would be the same. So if all you were doing is running statistical analyses and you hadn't stopped to look at the data, uh, you know any of these four data sets would have given you all the exact same statistics out of you know a linear model or some basic su uh, summary statistics. Um, so it's again, it's important to actually look at the data because you know one of these kind of corresponds to what we classically think of as being a linear model, this top uh, left figure. Uh, and, and others are close, like as, as the bottom left is, is close, but that line you know, doesn't really seem to do great because there's one outlier. Um, you know, yeah, and some of them, you know, you know, the top right, you know, that data you know, clearly doesn't look uh, to be following along a straight line. So again, we'd want to look at that before we fit a straight line to that data. Uh, that said, you know, in addition to visualizations, it can be handy uh, to do some sim simple statistics to kind of just get a feel for the relative strength of different relationships. Uh, and I, I find that correlations are a handy uh, tool for that. Uh, and as we talked about, you know, a couple of lectures back, we were introducing some basic uh, summary statistics. Uh, R has a handy function for calculating correlations, uh, where you just put in uh, the two variables you want to look at the correlation between, in this case, uh, soil temperature and air temperature. Uh, and then here, this use pairwise complete observations is a handy thing if you're doing a lot of correlations that kind of deals with uh, the, the missing data. So, so correlation, you know, if you, if you have, if you look at the correlation between two variables, but there's NAs in either of them, you know, you know, it'll just turn it return an NA. Uh, so the the uh, 
if you look at the help, you'll see there's various ways of filtering the data uh, to filter out the NAs uh, under this use argument. And at the bottom here, I, I've created a, a simple table summarizing the correlation coefficients uh, between soil temperature and my uh, six explanat possible explanatory variables. So you note here, I am not attempting to do a statistical test with these correlations. I'm just using them for exploratory purposes. And again, these are a complement to visualization, not a substitute to visualization. I also want to quickly point out uh, that if you are looking at a lot of data, um, that the uh, a lot of different variables, that the correlation function will also take matrices of data. So here, if I take the correlation function and pass it, say the first 10 columns in a data set, so dat column comma one through 10 is giving the first 10 columns. And now instead of, this is giving it 10 variables, is gonna calculate the pairwise uh, correlations between all of those variables. Um, and so what we see, is, well, first we see that nothing, everything with NA is, is, everything that's correlated with year is NA because this file happens to just be one year of data. Uh, and so nothing correlates. Um, and it's also, I believe, formatted as a time uh, variables. It, you know, it's, it's just not correlated. The other thing that we see is that along the diagonal here, so this defines a matrix of correlations, that the correlation between any variable in itself is one. You know, which makes sense. You know, things are perfectly correlated with each themselves, uh, but you can then see kind of patterns of things that are highly correlated, and some of them uh, kind of make sense, like d time, which is decimal time. You know, it's day. You know, is highly correlated with day of year. So day of year is is just integers. You know, it's the first day, it's the second day, it's the third day. Well, like if it's you know noon on the first day, that would be entered as you know one point five. Uh, for D time. And so, yeah, highly correlated, but they're not actually interesting because, you know, that's just the calendar. But if you look further on, you can look at some of other, other variables, such as air temperature, and see air temperature has a negative correlation with the gap filling, uh, you know, negative correlation with NEE or, or carbon flux variable, and so on and so forth. So you can get a whole matrix. Uh, the other thing to note about correlations in, in matrix form is that this matrix is symmetric. So for every value, uh, every value is kind of in here twice. So there's a correlation between NEE and uh, TA, but there's also a correlation between uh, in the other direction. Uh, so if I look at TA and NEE, in the bottom part here where uh, TA is on a row and NEE is in a column, I get the same value uh, showing up twice, so it's kind of symmetric. Okay, so after, I'm going to, in the next video, kind of talk about the basics of, of a simple univariate regression.